Hi everyone, welcome back to Technical Tuesdays this week. I have Jenry Garcia with me from Comfort Dynamics. Yep. We are here at the HVAC school headquarters in Kalos uh, in Claremont, Florida. And yesterday, Jenry and I gave a presentation explaining multiple ways of how the building envelope is actually a part of the HVAC system. Mm -hmm and how the HVAC system can exaggerate certain leaks in certain scenarios. So we're just gonna do a quick rundown on that here um, using this duct simulator case. So before we dive into how we have things set up here, um, Jenry, what kind of issues are we talking about when we run into in the field? So uh, the most common one is the lack of proper uh, return air path back into the main body of the house. So for this example, we're gonna use this, this simulator as the room. So this bag essentially is your room. This is gonna be our door or you know, door between the room and the rest of the house. And on the opposite side where you can see in the camera, we have a similar damper that we can close and open. We're gonna use that uh, to simulate leakage to outside, right? So door, also return to the main body of the house, leakage to outside. We're gonna also use the smoke, uh, the smoke puffers to you know, show what happens when we don't have enough, you know, we, don't have, we don't have proper return air path back into the rest of the house and how that can affect the pressure on the room. Also, if the pressure in the room is affected, in any way, positive, negative, in any way, right? The pressure in the house, it's also affected, all right? And normally it's affected in the opposite direction that the, the pressure in the room is. Meaning, if the room goes negative, then that means that the room, the house goes positive. And if the, if the room goes positive, then that means that the, the house goes negative. They're both bad, because if it's not designed, if it's not intended, then it shouldn't be that way. But that's normally the way that works. Um, in, the, in the discussion yesterday, we went over a lot more details. There's also been a lot of other videos well, presentations, I should say, that have discussed that here. So uh, if you wanna get more in-depth detail in that, you can, you can look those up. And also me and Sam wrote up a, an article recently uh, based on this, on this concept that, you know, you, there's a good bit of information there as well. Sure, so essentially what we're trying to do uh, to measure, or the, the measurement that we take uh, is basically checking the balance of the house. Yep. And what we're really looking for is making sure that any supply air that's delivered to that room when that, is, let's say we're talking about a bedroom that we have simulated here, if that bedroom door is closed, we still want a way to have that supply air to get back to the return. Yep. Uh, in a lot of cases, when we have that bedroom door shut, if we don't have a transfer grill or a jumper duct or an individual return in that room, that room can overpressurize and that air has to go somewhere. Yes. So it usually gets pushed outside, outside. of the envelope. So any leakage that's in, the, in that room gets exaggerated by the HVAC system. So what, what do we call that? That is uh, HVAC driven infiltration, which, you know, it can, it can, it can exacerbate, it can uh, overtake, if you will, really, the infiltration value of the home. So you can do a blower door test in the house and come up with a number, number, you know, X, Y, or Z. And when you use that number to do the low calculation on the home, you think you have to handle only a certain amount of infiltration load. Where in reality, when the HVAC runs, the infiltration load is actually much higher than that because you didn't account for this. You didn't account for HVAC driven pressurization or depressurization profile of the, of the house based on the efficiency of, of the HVAC system or just the house as a system concept, really. Yes, yeah, so we'll go ahead and demonstrate this. So this duct tester is simulating the HVAC system. Right. This is our supply going to the bedroom. Um, the manometer, uh, the way it looks, it looks like we're running a duct test, but uh, we're just reading pressure to this room. And so right now, uh, as you can see, we have an overpressurized bedroom at about 13 and a half to 14 pascals positive. So we'll set that back there. Um, actually, I'll hold this up uh, so you guys can see. So, Jenry, what happens to this pressure when we open a door? So, when when we open a door, look what happens. This is what what it would. This is the equivalent of opening literally the bedroom door, or even adding a return air path. Look at the pressure. So, we're opening the bedroom door. I'm gonna make sure this probe stays in there so we can take a reading. We're watching it drop. So, we're, again, we were at 13 and a half, 14. Now we're down to five. So, just opening that up, cut it in half. Let me know when it's at three. We're at four, three, now we're at three. All right, so that's essentially the, the threshold, right? It shouldn't be any higher than that. And in some cases, as we discussed yesterday in the presentation, it should be even lower than that, right? So- The closer to zero, the better. Exactly, I mean, realistically zero, uh, I mean, may or may not get there, uh, but you know, as close as zero as possible. 
Okay, and of course, if we were to open the bedroom door all the way up, it would go to zero. Exactly. So, one tricky thing is about this, you know, if we do, if we say, okay, three is a decent number, but what happens if we shut the bedroom door? Another scenario where we can get to that three is if we have an actually a, a leaky room that leaks to the outside. So if we, let's just make this bedroom leakier. So let's say we have a chase or something, somehow that this bedroom is connected to the outside. At first glance, now that Jenry made this room leakier to the outside of the house, we're looking at two Pascals. At first glance, this looks good. It's fine, yeah. But, and, but I mean, we know from this demonstration, it's not. Mm -hmm. So if we were in the field and trying to take a deeper dive to double check the issue, what would we do? Exactly, if anything and, every, and if everything we take into consideration is the pressure differential in between the room and the rest of the house, doing this, this pressure test in, across the, uh, the, you know, the isolating door, then we are missing out on possible leakage that there might exist between the room and the outside. If, if we look at this scenario where the pressure is, you know, it's less than two pascals, you would think, well, that's perfect. Ma'am, I don't know why your room is not comfortable. I mean, we got enough low, we have the pressure differentials low, we get, well, that means we're getting enough return. You're not getting enough return. What happens is the room is becoming pressurized and it's, it's going out of the house through, a, uh, it's relieving out of the house through, a, you know, through a external uh, shell leakage, right? There's leakage on the, on the shell of the house that is allowing that air from that bedroom to leak outside the house. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily outside through like a yard or something like that. If there's leakage through the ceiling plane, that, that, you know, that, that uh, air might be going into the attic. If there's leakage on your floors and you have a crawl space, it might be getting there. It doesn't really matter matter where it goes. What it only, the only thing that matters is that it's not getting back to the house, right? To the return side of the HVAC, where it should go. So we're gonna take this demonstration a step further and actually show you what happens in a house when we get an overpressurized room. So we'll, we'll, shut, it, we'll shut it all back here. Mm -hmm. We'll make this room a little bit tighter. We'll get it overpressurized again. Um, we have our pressure back up to about 13 uh, pascals here, positive. We're gonna kill the fan here for a second. Uh, the tough thing about finding air leaks in a house is that air is invisible. So one way to make this stuff uh, a little more easier to come across in the field is using a smoke generator. So we're actually gonna do that. We're gonna fill the room with smoke. Um, so we'll go ahead and discharge that and just dump a bunch of smoke in there. That's enough, you think? Uh, a little more. All right, now we're good. So we'll zip it back up just in the same condition that we had it. And we'll go ahead and we'll set this back to the exact same speed uh, where we had it. As that room pressurizes. Look at the smoke. That's air escaping the building envelope. Air that we've worked hard to condition. Yep. And are you the losing? systems that we install and service. But if the room is not set up to deliver that air back to the return, then we're literally just pushing it outside. Also now, look what happens when we, do, when we do have that proper return. So we'll zip it back here. Yep. We're gonna give ourselves uh, a jumper duct here over the doorway. Now that air is coming out of here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and is able to go back to the system. So if this is our hallway, that's great. There's yep. probably a main return over here in the ceiling. That air can go back and return back to the system. And of course, the opposite can happen. We can have too much return. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have a return in there that's uh, a lot more powerful than the supply, we can pull this room negative. And then if we have a hot and humid climate in the summertime, if we're running the AC, we can pull hot, humid air into the room and make that uncomfortable as well. So mm -hmm. that's why we want to even balance. We don't want to go too much in either direction. Right. So that, that's one of the, perhaps one of the, one of the arguments that shows that, you know, ductive returns are not always necessarily better. You know, there are considerations that need to be made for them to work properly. Because if, we, if you have the same setup and the return, and the, and the return was, no, it was overpowering the supply because it's ducted directly into the HVAC, then this room would actually go negative. And all the, all the conditions from outside will be pushing into the room, making it uncomfortable as well. Well, great. Well, that'll do it for us this week. Jenry, thanks for joining me. Thank you. This has been fun. Yep. And uh, we'll catch you back again next week. Thanks. thanks.